businesses don't grow in this nice, straight, smooth path. And basically, it's kind of this fits and spurts that you'll have some sections that are that are nice and smooth growth, but then you'll other have other sections that are just this basically real turbulent, almost whitewater kind of phase. Hey guys, welcome back to the Leadership Stack Podcast, the podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to increase your leadership, teamwork, and profits. This is your host, Sean C., aka Mr. CEO at 22. Things are going to happen in the business, and we've got to be able to have a good way to address issues as they come up and not the these kind of stereotypical way of we're going to discuss the heck out of all these symptoms around it, never get to the root cause, never solve anything. So I'm going to take your what you said, and they feel like they're stuck in the mud. In short, some entrepreneurs feel like they hit a wall. It's impossible yeah. for them. Entrepreneurs, we're optimistic. If we weren't optimistic, we're not going to be entrepreneurs, right? And, and What does it take for an entrepreneur to say that's impossible? I'm stuck in the mud. What do you do, Jeff, during those times? Because that takes a lot of wisdom to get them through that wall of impossibility in their heads. And an, an optimistic person saying that, it's almost also impossible for you to get them out of it. What do you say during those times? This episode is partnered up with Armory.ph. That is A-R-M-O-U-R-Y dot P-H. Armory is an online watch store and is the exclusive distributor of the brands T.W. Steel, Dion Milano, Fonderia, Luminox, and Mondain in the Philippines. Yes, folks, those are Italian watch brands. If you are looking to buy your next go-to luxurious everyday watch, Go to armory.ph and enter the coupon code LS30. That's all caps LS30, no space. Armory.ph delivers straight to your doorstep with a security tape to make sure that your package is safe from theft, arrives on time, and is guaranteed working 100%. Go to armory.ph and buy your first luxury watch today. Well, it's the difference really is... Every company, from a business perspective, everybody's going to constantly be hitting ceilings as they grow on the on the business side. And the reality is simply, and a lot of times it's just a matter, honestly, of pointing this out to say, okay, the the skill set, the structure of the company at five to ten people for that level of business is completely different than what you need at, say, fifty employees, kind of a thing there with three or four different markets instead of one market, kind of a thing. As you start to grow that that business i think it was a, actually a harvard maybe a harvard study or there was, there was a study a, a while back kind of a thing saying that businesses don't grow in this nice straight smooth path that basically it's kind of this fits and spurts that you'll have some sections that are that are nice and smooth growth but then you'll other have other sections that are just this basically real turbulent almost white water kind of phase of okay that's more of a a transformation that the, the business has to change at that point whether that's Simply growing out and scaling and saying, hey, we've got to actually have now a, a, a VP of sales, a VP of marketing, a, a CFO, et cetera. We've got to start breaking this up and structuring it rather than me as the, the entrepreneur or me as the visionary trying to do everything and wear all the hats. That's a difficult transition for a lot of people because they're used to having their fingers in everything. They're used to having that full control. But at the same time, if you can really show them through having a, a set of what we look at is, is a scorecard or basically a set of metrics to say, okay, if you can sit back on the beach here and I'll bring you one piece of paper that's got 15 numbers on it that talk about, okay, what's your accounts receivable balance versus what's your, your number of leads coming in versus your number of reported defects, whatever it is that make the right numbers, the right metrics for your business, you can sit on that beach out there and be completely comfortable that yes, by looking at these 15 numbers, and the, the trends that have been going on, I'm perfectly confident that my business is doing what it needs to be. And I don't have to go sit in the back pocket of the sales rep to say, have you made your 10 calls today or whatever it's supposed to be? Or, or, or sit with finance, say, okay, which numbers, where, where's our accounts receivable? Where's the number? You don't have to be embedded like that into the minutia, into the details. And in a lot of ways, once they kind of see that and once they get comfortable with it, it's it's this huge load kind of lifts off to say, hey, I, this this will work. I, we can actually do this in bigger picture, bigger scope. And 
I don't have to worry about all this. I don't have to have the stress kind of thing of what all the little details kind of a thing, because I do have the right people sitting in the right seat reporting the numbers to where all I have to do is just see those numbers. I, I can be confident in that. So it's it's really getting them to kind of realize that, yes, while they're used to doing things in a certain way, that's their way of doing things. As long as we get processes and procedures uh even your culture, things like that, documented, figured out such that you've got everybody on board with that, then you can step back and trust that, okay, we can grow to the next level because we have our systems, we have our foundation in place. And so therefore, going from salesperson one to now two, three, and four is really not that any big a deal. It actually is a true scale at that point because we have documented sales processes. We have a documented target market. We have documented differentiators and a guarantee that makes us different than our competitors. And all four of those salespeople are using the same language, the same, everything that we're talking about in our business and working together. So it's a true scale rather than saying, hey, throw you to the, the sharks out here and go come up with your own verbiage. And all of a sudden we've got marketing pushing out one message, sales doing something else and operations kind of throwing their hands up and saying, what the heck did you sell this time? If we've got this all documented and put together, then everything just keeps working as we grow, as we keep scaling there. And it really takes a lot of that pressure off of the leadership team as they grow. And it it's a transition and it, it can definitely can be difficult for some people, but it's it's one that, okay, once you kind of start seeing that picture as to one, realizing, okay, this is the goal that we're working towards for our company as a whole, but still the fact that I can see that, okay, we are making progress to that and I've got visibility, I've got clarity into my company says, hey, we can we can make this work. It doesn't have to be exactly the same way as it always was, that we can we can break through this ceiling and keep moving forward at that point. You mentioned that if you have 15 numbers that would tell you the health or status of your business while you're taking a vacation, that's what you know what would those numbers be now i'm wondering with with the pandemic and all and we are in a pandemic we are in a crisis are there clients who approached you again and told you jeff what adjustments do i need to do cuz it's the pandemic i need to shrink some scores in my scorecard how do i do it two two questions there and i'll kind of answer them separate but in terms of okay what do i need to do the question of what do i need to do in my business that's the nice part about having that foundation, having those systems in place is I know exactly where the levers are now in my business that I can go pull to say, hey, we need more profitability right now. We need to scale this back, whatever the cases may be. And that's that's unique per business, really what it is. But still, they've got the clarity at that point in this system to say, hey, I know what's going on in my business. I can see like I said, the scorecard metrics, because we look at those over usually are rolling 15 weeks. So I can see trends and patterns as we go along here to say, OK, this number is going off track here. We're, we're no longer getting the new leads into the system if we're tracking sales leads kind of a thing. So we can have the, the runway to sit there and evaluate that and say, OK, is this something that we can fix just by different marketing or, or changing a, a product pitch or something like that? Or do we need to look at, hey, we've got four salespeople right now, can we scale this back to two and still handle basically on our processes kind of standpoint? So yes, having that clarity gives you much, much easier way to pivot, much easier way to have that visibility. The other side of the question there that I kind of want to address is is more, and, and we can look at it later, but it's still, it's, it's the way I work with the clients here with my customers is really completely different from anything I did before with, with consulting because on, on this side, I'm more of a, a truly is, is a coach at this point, not a consulting. So if you look at it from the, the sporting analogy kind of standpoint, the coach is the one sitting there training the team, working through practices, building up those skills, the muscle memory, things like that. But then it's okay, team, you got to go on the field, you got to play the game. I, I'm not getting on the field to play the game here. So with this, I'm working with their leadership team, working with those leaders of that company to get them to start building this process, building this, this cadence here to say, okay, this is how we're going to report numbers. This is how we're going to, how we're going to run meetings. This is how we're going to plan our, our quarter and work through our quarter kind of a thing there. And then it's up to them to go run it. So when you're asking and say, do they come to me and ask, what do we change? No, they really don't because they've already got the systems. They've got the clarity. 
they already know what to change. I'm not telling them how to run their business. It's that I always tell them, hey, you've got all the expertise you need already in this room. All we're doing is helping build the foundation to give you some more tools, some more 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 leverage right there that you can work with. But you've got the ability, you've already got the, the expertise here on how to run the business. I'm not the one sitting here telling you how to build widgets or how to sell medical or, or whatever your, your business is kind of a thing there. I'm just the one on the outside basically bringing the tools, bringing the knowledge, bringing the expertise of the system here, as well as that outside accountability to, to say, hey, I'm coming back next month. I'm going to meet you again next quarter and say, why didn't we hit these numbers? Why are your scorecards off track? Why are your measurables off track? Because that's really the differentiation when you, as, as many books and as many tools and stuff out there, we all go pick up a web, pick up a book or watch a webinar or something like that. It's a great idea for Monday and then by Tuesday, it's completely gone kind of a thing there. And in order to make this work, it's, it's really a, a much more of, I, I refer to it as a journey. It's a longer term process that I'm sitting there working with you to sit there and build that that muscle memory, build that that habits in there. But from a, a running the business standpoint, it's 100% them. You, you mentioned also about culture earlier in your earlier answer. And culture is one of the things that, in my opinion, is super duper important when you're in a stage where you're investing in systems, investing in processes, um, just like what you have been mentioning. And I'm sure you can't just throw it out the window. I'm sure you also tackle culture when you're coaching these companies. There are companies who I'm quite sure you have approached and they have a broken culture or they have the wrong culture. How do you fix that? I mean, that's so messy. I, I, I imagine myself looking at a company with a broken culture, culture of gossip, culture of politics. I mean, how do you fix that? I'm super curious. Well, it's, it really starts with the leadership team in the first place to decide, because that's actually part of the vision component is to say, okay, who are we as a, a company? Basically three different things. What's your core focus? What's your core values there as the company? Who are we going to be? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Kind of a thing from your vision standpoint to decide, okay, like you said, vision statement's one piece of it, but we're going to say, hey, our, our core focus is looking at honesty and integrity. Our core focus is, is being always there for the customer. Whatever it is, it's always unique for every company, but still defining that out almost in kind of a vacuum to say, okay, this is who we are taking everything else that we've got, all the people, all the all the issues, everything we've got out of the picture. Hey, forget all about that. Ideal world, this is going to be who we are. This is how we're going to be known and everything's going to move towards this culture. And then once we've got that defined from a vision standpoint, it actually rolls down into what we refer to as the people component, the people side, such that it's not just a matter when you're either doing a, a review of an existing employee or you're hiring for a new employee, whatever there, you've got, it's a combination of it. It's, it's the having the right seat in the, the org chart there to say, okay, do you have the skills actually, the, the hard skills to be able to do this job and or can you be trained to do this job? But the other side is, do you fit our values? Do you fit our culture right here? Are you going to subscribe to that kind of a thing there? And we'll actually, there's actually several different tools there's a, uh, that we work through that actually put basically almost a, a measurable scorecard again to say, hey, here are our five, six, seven, whatever it is, company values here. And you're meeting one, two, and three, you're below the line here on four. And okay, we'll sit down and have a very concrete conversation, manager to employee to say, okay, Here's where you stand. Here's where here's where you are on our, our culture side. Is this something you're willing to work towards, something you're willing to address, things like that, and have that conversation there? And obviously, if it's not, then it's something that, honestly, you have to make a decision on. And really, my coaching, my my push there is to say, okay, if they're, it doesn't matter if they are your number one salesperson. If they're not meeting your company values, if they're not meeting your company culture, they're sitting there chipping away at your foundation that they may be off making deals that under the table or making making promises that honestly you can't keep because that's not part of your your values or your culture there. So just because they're your best salesperson or just because they're your best customer service rep or whatever, you got to look at it and say, okay, they're not, they, they may be incredibly capable, but they're not the right person for us. They're not making those values. So we've got to make a change at it, but it's, having those drawn out, having those identified 
really makes it clear to everybody involved because how many times do you, you have that, that conversation with an employee or with a manager? And it's like, I don't even know what the measuring stick is that we're trying to measure up to or measure against here. If you've got these core values, this core focus laid out black and white that everybody in the company, everybody in the organization can see, real clear conversation, real clear, transparent kind of conversation of, okay, you're, you're making, you're hitting these, you're not hitting these. Or in the case of a new hire, you lay it out on the table right at that point. It's like, okay, here is our vision. Here's what we're trying to reach from a company standpoint. Here's who we are. Here's our values that we're going to measure to. And oh yeah, here's the actual hard skills and everything we need for this position. But you've got a, it's an entire package here. We're not hiring just because you're a great salesperson or just because you're a great programmer. You, it's, it's the entire package. You've got to, you've got to meet these company values and live up to these company values as well as being a part of our culture. And it's really just ensuring you've got the right people there, right seats as well as right fit kind of a thing to have both of them together. Culture and process over individual people, right? Yeah. Yeah. When we, when we look at it, it's, it's, a very clear differentiation to say, okay, make sure you've got the the overall structure, the, the right seats for your company. Show me, explain to me what the structure, ideal structure is of your company. And then let's bring the people back into it and say, okay, does John fit this seat really? Does he, uh, we refer to it as GWC, get it, want it, and, and have the capacity for it. Does does he really get what's involved with his role, what's his, what his seat is? Does he really want that? Does he want all those pieces there? And then lastly, capacity. Does he have the skills? Does he have the time, et cetera, to fulfill that seat? But it's really a, a structure first, people second kind of idea that it, in some ways it almost sounds kind of cold that, yeah, we can replace people. But if we put the wrong people into even the right seats at that point, it just it always is a hold back, a, a, an anchor right there on our company, holding us back there moving forward. You've got to have got to have both basically you've got to have the right structure and the right seats laid out but you got to have the right people with the right values in those seats love it and that is something that i also learned from the book good to great by jim collins i believe yep. right super yep, important right people in the right seats sounds so simple but a lot of companies get it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's simple until you try to go do it. And yeah. Yep. And that's because we are in the people business and people, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. There are X factors in your business. Processes can be followed and you can be sure about it. Culture can be followed. You quite be quite sure about it. But people, people are unpredictable. It's a privilege and a blessing to work in a family business. But you have to do it right. Just like any other company, you have to do things right. If you do things wrong, then the company will crumble and fall down and be torn apart. And I think that as a family, you have more chances of getting up.